first thing that you need to do is determine how much clay is needed. These are the molds that I'm going to use. I created these from some existing forms that I had. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure them. And this is about five and a half, so I'm going to create a circle that's about five and a half, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe six. And this is five. And then this is three and a half. So I'm going to cut out, I'm going to roll a slab, and then I'm going to cut out a circle that is uh, approximately those measurements. Before I do that, I'll just show you quickly where I got these forms from. This is from a cooking supply store. It just was a, a prep bowl for spices. Um, and so I just poured some plaster into that. And then these are ornaments uh, that I got at the craft store. And that's how you make your handy dandy molds. So I'm using a stoneware clay, and this is my circle, it's not perfect. But I'm going to trim it, so it really doesn't matter at this point. So I'm going to set this down on some foam, and then I'm going to take my largest form, and I'm going to center it inside the middle. And then I'm just going to push down. And then I'm just going to twist it around and just keep pushing it inwards. And I don't care that's kind of crinkling right now. That's All this is material that's going to come off. I just want to make sure that it's tight to the form. Alright, so when you're done you should have like this jellyfish looking thing. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to take this part off now. The way that I like to take it off is just with a simple old used credit card. I would just cut into it and go around. Uh, you could use a needle tool, but the thing about needle tools is that it scrapes and you don't want to mix your plaster in with the clay. So plastic is better for that, so is wood. So you could use a wood rib if you wanted to. And voila! So I'm going to set this aside and let it set up a teeny bit. And I'm going to repeat now for the other pieces. Okay, we're back. I now have my three pieces and they're still on the mold. So what I'm going to do is gently push it back and then take the mold out and put it down carefully. So I didn't really let these set up very long. You could. Um, you don't want to set them up too long because we're going to do some stretching. So you could go to a soft leather hard. And the other thing too is if you keep them on the molds they may crack. So there's that one. And then you can see I'm just gently pushing it back and then pulling it out. I'll start with the big one. And what I'm going to do is get my fingers wet and then with my thumb, and in between my forefinger and my other thumb, I'm just going to start pushing out. So it kind of looks like a cross-section of the human eyeball. This is a stoneware clay, and uh, I've done these in stoneware and also in por uh, porcelain. So I set it back down. You can you can see where I've pushed out. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run my finger over the section where I pushed it out. And that creates the first ridge. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, um, one of my favorite tools is just a chopstick that I've sharpened with a pencil sharpener. And then I'm going to run it across the indentation where my finger went. And this creates the delineation between the head and the rest of the body. Next, I'm going to draw the line in the back. And there you have it. Very simple. You just let it set up. I'm going to repeat again for this one. And 
can see when I set it down, the part that got pushed out. And I'm drawing with my finger the line between the body and the head. Now for her ladybugs, we also put eyeballs on them. We just rolled balls of clay and put them on there. Uh, she wanted eyeballs. I, when I'm making some for me, I like them just a little bit, just simple. No eyeballs. Just black and red and dots. Cute. And the last one. This one, the edges, inside edges are really rough, so I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. And when the other ones have firmed up a little bit, I'll go back with them and clean them up too. This one was just asking for it though. I think this shape would be great uh, also for maybe making turtles, but I haven't tried that yet. So now I'm going to let these set up for a little bit and then I'll come up and do the final cleaning on them before I set them out for drying. we're back. These ladybugs have set up now and I would say they're a soft leather hard. They're easy. They keep their form when I pick them up. And now what I'm doing is I'm just taking a damp sponge and I'm just going around the edges. I'll do that with my finger too. I've already put my initials on the inside and I'm just going to smooth out all the rough pieces. I'm going to go over the back, smooth out this line. Now I've done these two ways when I decorate them. I have fired them and then used um, under glazes with a clear glaze and I've also painted them when they're in this condition right here when they're leather, soft, leather hard to leather hard. The thing that I found is that um, with the underglazes that you use more coats when it's soft leather hard or leather hard than versus when it's bisque. Uh, these are the paints that I use, the western underglazes. And like I said, these uh, I fired these to cone 10 and these glazes work well up to cone 10. Here's this little guy. I'm just going to go around the outside and get these chunks off. This part is especially important um, if you're going to use the underglazes, you know, the leather hard state. Another option too is if you have um, regular glazes, red and black, you could use those you know, after the bisking. Alright, that cleaned up pretty well. So in this video, I'm not going to show you the actual glazing of it. I figured you can, that's pretty easy, self-explanatory. But I will talk a little bit about the firing and how I'm going to handle it. 
With the underglazes, these ones, um, there's no flux, so you can actually paint all the way down to the very bottom, and it won't be a problem in the kiln. Now, the, the glaze that you're going to put on top of it, the clear glaze, you can't go that far, but um, unless you have something that you're going to fire it on. And there we go. Nice. So what I'm going to do when I fire, I'm going to use a chuck. And this is a chuck. It's just uh, clay that I started up doing a um, cylinder on the wheel, and then I flared it out a little bit. And once I have glazed uh, and I'm ready for the final firing, then I'm just going to stick him on top of the chuck, and I'll fire him like that. What I will do is, um, when I glaze him, I'll make sure that I have waxed the inside so that there's no glaze on the inside. That way it will not stick to this. And as you can see, I have chucks in all kinds of sizes. That'll work. And hopefully this one will work with the baby one. Yay! All right. That's it for this project. Good luck, and I hope you have fun with it.